Okay, so this is going to be an introduction to HTML and CSS. Uh, this is going to answer the first part and introduce you um, to uh, HTML and CSS, which is for the Unit 20, the beginning of Unit 20. Uh, if you've never used it before, I'll just begin with a few of the very first basics, and then I'm going to go into answering what you need for Assignment 1, Task 1. So, if you never used HTML and CSS before, the thing I love about it is that you don't need any specialist software. There are programs you can use, but you can simply use Notepad, or you can use Notepad++. If you use Notepad, the only thing you need to know is when you save your file, save as, is that you have to finish the file name with .html and you have to, so it does all files, file type, all files. Okay. If I use Notepad++, it helps me a little bit more, it's a little bit more designed for coding HTML, it's a free program. It's a text editor, so you can write to all different types of files. If I use Notepad++, then Ooh. slightly different to save. Example two. You just put the file name in, and then here, because it's designed more for programmers you choose the option hypertext markup language and I should qualify this second one to accept it correctly. You now have these two files. Uh, the other thing I love about the language is, other than this first declaration at the top, everything else comes in pairs. So uh, HTML, oh, do you know what I'm going to use? Uh, Notepad++ because it will help me. HTML is paired with slash HTML. Head is paired with slash head. You see the slash in front of it. Body is paired with slash body. So um, you have not as much code to write, so you begin a section with the uh, bracket, the angle brackets, and you close with the same word, but with the slash in it. Um, what's the difference between HTML and CSS? So HTML, we're going to see in a minute, HTML is the structure and the words that appear on your screen, the pictures and the words. Um, perhaps the opening times of the museum, if you're writing a web page for a museum, and the pictures of your day out. CSS, cascading style sheet, is the design part of it. So it might say whether there's going to be a board around the picture, or what size the writing will be, or whether there will be bullet points on the, the writing. So that's the differences. Very briefly, you'll know more. So uh, where can I get help? So two fantastic websites are W3Schools and HTML Cheat Sheet. I'll show you those now. W3Schools, uh, the search is actually better if you search for W3Schools and the word you want in Google. W3Schools has every um, tutorial you might want and it includes these examples, try it yourself examples, where you're given uh, certain options, you're, given, you're shown the code, and then if you change it and you type here, you can see it changes. Fantastic, really, really helpful. The other one is HTML cheat sheet, and here is just about every piece of code of a combination that you might want. Uh, so it has all the tags, um, it also lets you um, 
format certain things and builds the code for you. So for example, if I want to put a bulleted, bulleted list, here's the code that I would follow. Really, really good for not having to remember everything. So uh, at five minutes, just over five minutes, I'm coming into assignment one, task one. So um, what you need to know for this is that there are three places that you can put HTML code, uh, sorry, CSS code. You can put it in line. What we mean by that is if you look, this is very familiar now. You've just seen this in the code that I had earlier. Here's my start. I declare HTML. I declare a body space. I don't have a head here. I just go straight into the body. And what's happening is I'm writing some words, a blue heading, a red heading. But notice that the style is declared individually within my uh, definition of my, my tag. And I know that doesn't mean anything at the minute, but I'm going to show you the, the next example and you'll see how that differs. So my next option, and, and that's good for quick changes, but you can see the code is mixed in styling is mixed in with the words that I have showing on the screen. It's difficult to edit. My next option is internal. And internal here is my example from W3 Schools. So notice that I still have my styling and look, I have a section that is called style. And all my CSS, all my CSS is appearing in here. All my styling is pulled up to the top and it's all found in the style section, which is within the head section. So why does that matter? It means that I can put my client's content in here. This is saying it's going to be a, a slightly a big heading. Um, So I put some more content. Um, I don't have to redefine. I don't have to mix it up with what it's going to look like. So I can do that. The client comes up later and says they want a different colour background. They would like a yellow background. And it's simple for me to make changes of the style separate from the content. So this is internal, it's within the main HTML file, but it's separate, it's not in line with the words, the content, it's separated out. So it's internal and not in line. You can see now how this version I showed you earlier, the style, every time I define some style, I have to write the word style and then define what style I want for that. And you'll notice if I now add a separate, a new copy, but don't include the style information, it hasn't included the style. So every time I want that style, I have to remember that I've got to include it. And it's easy to make mistakes. Okay. Internal, however, I just define each 
tag once and wherever I've, whatever I've defined, I can use. Finally, the third way of storing your style, your CSS, is what's called external. So this looks very familiar to the internal. So notice that it has the declaration at the top, it has HTML, it has the head section, it has a body section, and notice all the content is again in the body section. Content always goes in the body section. What appears on the screen goes in the body section. But instead of having all my styling in a style section in the head, for external, I no longer have a style section, but I have a link. And the link tells me, uh, it's defined as a style sheet, it's a style sheet link. And then there's an href, which says, where should you go? Hyperlink reference, or hyper reference, to go to. And it's going to be a file, and at the moment it's in the same folder because I haven't put a path attached to it. It's a file called styles. Dot CSS and I've made a file here in Word so this is what style.css would look like and if I'm going to save that I would save it as style.css all file type and you'll notice I now have a cascading style sheet in that folder. And what you can see then is the style section is in a separate file for external CSS. It's called by the page. So why would I do this? Well, the reason why I would do this is because I might have a 100 pages all wanting the same styling. So, for example, um, the BBC, thousands and thousands of pages. One day, um, the head of design says that they need to change the font or something. If I had used inline or internal, I would have to go to every page and make that change. And then I'd have to go to the next page where my style was and make the change. When I do external style, all I have to do is change the one CSS file that is referenced by all my hundreds of pages and making this one change will change the content of every, or the, sorry, the look, the style of every page that references it. Okay, so quick review. Inline, you mix the coding style coding into mixed in with the content you have to define it every single time you use a tag and you have to write style it's mixed in so it's difficult for continuity and editing later if you leave that for someone the next week they've got to go in individually and find everything it's good for quick changes for testing things internal you tuck CSS in at the top in a style section. It separates the style from the content. It's much easier to edit both the style and the content. And you define it once on a page and then it's done. You define sorry, a tag once on a page and then every time you use that tag on the page it's done. But on the downside it's only for one page. Final, finally, external. You have a separate CSS file. You refer to it in the head section this time of the, C of the HTML file. You save the code just once, so the change only needs to be made one time 
even if you use that style on hundreds of individual HTML pages. The downside, oh, there's more setup. God, it took like two minutes, did you notice there, maybe the first time? That's it. That is the only downside, I would say. So that will be everything you need to help you uh, to understand um, where you can use CSS inline, internal or external.